call the board meeting to order. <laughs> we'll stand and be led in the pledge by Mr. Levenstein. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Levenstein. Can I have roll call, please? Mr. Howard? Here. Mr. Lawson? Here. Mr. Levenstein? Here. Mr. Lewis? Ms. McAfee? Here. Mr. Rokoff? Here. Ms. Resch? Here. Mr. Woodhall? Here. Ms. Mujek? Here. Our first item on the agenda are reports from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. First up tonight, our district senior staff met with representatives of the district's crisis intervention team to communicate the district interventional with regards to the incident at Newton, Connecticut. Mr. Katz and Mr. Altman are here this evening to share our immediate response. Mr. Altman, Mr. Katz. Please step to the podium. Thank you. Good evening. Guys, you gotta quiet down. We can't hear what they're saying in here. Good evening. It's kind of awkward. I want to have my face towards all of you because it really is with all of you and all of your children in mind that we came together to try and see how as a district we could best support your children. Everybody was affected to one degree or another from last Friday's events. What I hope you walk away with an understanding of is that there is a comprehensive group of trained professionals that are here for the emotional support of your children. Not just in times of a crisis as severe as last Friday, but at any time. Yesterday, several of us came together here at the Board of Education representatives from the school's social workers, our school psychologists, from my discipline as a guidance counselor, looking to see what were the needs in each building throughout our district, were those needs being met, how could we deploy and redeploy staff, how could we give information and support to our students, to you as parents, and to our teachers. Our teachers, and as an educator myself, we fill many shoes. In addition to being a school counselor, I'm also a parent. Teachers were affected. So we tried to provide the most comprehensive support that we knew and to give the best guidance. And if any of you are looking for additional support, please don't hesitate to contact your school and ask to speak with any of the school counselors, the school psychologists, or the school social workers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Katz. <clears throat> Next, we will recognize the District Day of Writing winners, Julio Vasquez. Thank you, board members, parents, and staff for being here and taking a very important part and role in celebrating and recognizing our students today for their hard work and outstanding participation on the District Day of Writing, which was held on October 19th. And it celebrated the theme of tolerance. Our students' work was selected as exemplary work, and it was graded based on their opinion, their organization and focus, their use of the six plus one writing trait of voice, and their use of language conventions. We are grateful and we are proud for their hard work, but also for the collaborative work of their families and their teachers. What I was most impressed by was by the sentiment behind their writing. They understand 
that tolerance means being respectful of others. It means showing care for others. It means treating others as we would expect to be treated. And I believe that if more of us thought the way that these children do, our world would be a much better place. So without further ado, please join me in congratulating them as we present them with certificates and ribbons. Our first student today that we want to present an award to is our pre-K student, Reminis Hagen. Garden, we have John Finnegan. Zunio, also in kindergarten. We have Lisa Torres. students for first grade were not able to be here due to a concert at Horizons. They were Zoe Themister and Caitlin McDowell. But we do have Lindsay Gill for first grade here. In second grade, we have Samantha Lopez. <laughs> Madeline Tong. Isabella Delgado. <laughs> For third grade, we have Ava Stumer. Megan Cameron. And Alani Quinn.
Fourth grade, we have Jessica Pugh. Okay, this young lady came up to me about the pronunciation of her name, but please excuse me, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Maeve Pasquilicio. and Lizbeth Gonzalez. Um, for our fifth grade students, Naomi, Naomi Themister was not able to be here, but we do have Jasmine Ramirez. and Marianne Kozlowski. Please join, it, join me in congratulating all of them. In a moment, we will be presenting awards to our 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, but may I invite any other parents who might like to come up and take a picture to do so now before we invite these children to take their seats again. Dr. Elizabeth Tundike. I am the Director of Secondary Interdisciplinary Curriculum and Instruction, and I have the distinct pleasure of working with our middle level ELA curriculum chair, Pam Kreisek, and Pam is also an instructional coach at South Middle School, uh, in reading the contributions from our sixth and seventh and eighth grade students who also wrote on the theme of tolerance. 
at this time, I'd like to invite sixth grader Vituan Sampun Vensopa to come up and receive her award. Thank you. Also in sixth grade, Jaden Hamilton. And from sixth grade, also Logan Murillo. In seventh grade, Kayla Burlingham. Is Kayla here? Also in seventh grade, Aboya Omar. And lastly, from seventh grade, Jackson, uh, sorry, Jackson Galati. And we actually have uh, four <coughs> award recipients from eighth grade. Uh, there were two in particular that were both very compelling. We couldn't decide between them. So at this time, I'd like to invite Roberto Figueroa up to the stage. Also from the eighth grade, Ahib Al Ghazali. Also an 8th grade student, Kyle. <laughs> and finally, our last award recipient this evening from 8th grade, Michaela Lake. Thank you so much, and congratulations to all of you for your wonderful work. Oh, 
attention please <laughs> for the second part of our evening festivities we have to recognize three very productive Newburg people this evening we're extremely pleased and proud to recognize three individuals who are closely associated with Newburg Free Academy and the district and who have represented the school and the district with honor in several capacities our first honoree this evening is Samara Lane, who graced the halls of NFA as a student and went on to participate with distinction in the 2012 London Summer Olympics. This is a significant achievement that requires courage and dedication. Samara has brought us pride, and I would like to invite him to, enjoy, to join us at the dais to receive a certificate of achievement and a proclamation which I will read from Senator Wilk, William Larkin, Jr. Samara, would you like to come up here, please? Senator Larkin's proclamation honoring Samara Lane. Upon representing his native country, Haiti, for track and field at the Summer Olympics in London, England, whereas it is appropriate to extend full recognition and grateful tribute to the athletes of New York State 
who have dedicated their pers purposeful lives to athletic achievement and proudly represented their great state in international sports and competition. And whereas athletic competition enhances the moral and physical development of the young people of this state, preparing them for the future of instilling in them the value of teamwork, encouraging a standard of helpful living, imparting a desire for success, and developing a sense of fair play and competition. And whereas attendant to such concern, I, Senator William J. Larkin, Jr., am justly proud to honor Samar Lane upon representing his native country for track and field at the Summer Olympics in London, England. And whereas Samar Lane graduated from Newburgh Free Academy in 2002 and is a graduate of the Harvard Business School, the Sports Management Program at the University of Texas, and Georgetown University Law School, and how about a nice round of applause? Halfway through this, <laughs> but I had to stop with all that. Those schools you've stopped at along the way, Samar. Whereas a gifted athlete, Samar Lane's character and achievements stand as a starting, a sterling example, an inspiration to all who would aspire to such extraordinary success. And whereas Samar Lane's overall record is outstanding, he was loyally and enthusiastically supported by family fans, friends, and the community at large. And whereas many will only dream of competing in international sports competitions, this young gifted athlete, athlete from the great state of New York, through his hard work and tenacious spirit, has made that vision a reality and will proudly represent his native country, Haiti, in competition among the world's finest athletes, an honor that gives just cause for his family community, and state to be exceedingly proud of his achievements. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that as a duly elected member of the New York State Senate, I, Senator William J. Larkin, Jr., pause in my legislative deliberations to honor Samar Lane upon representing his native country, Haiti, for track and field at the Summer Olympics in London, England, and be it farther proclaimed that a copy of this proclamation suitably engrossed, be transmitted to Samar. It's signed William J. Larkin, and he's sick tonight, and he can't make it. So he asked me <laughs> to impart that to you. being the great person that he is, has just agreed to come back and uh, visit some of our schools and, and visit with our students in their classrooms on his next visit. <laughs> Madam President, our second honoree this evening is Christine McCartney who also graces classrooms of NFA as an English teacher. Very recently, we received the news that Christine would be traveling to Finland to conduct educational research in that country. The news was brought significant because Christine received a distinguished Fulbright Award in teaching, one of only 20 granted this year. 
This honor is the result of Christine's continuing learning efforts, and we congratulate her on the award. I would like to invite Christine to join us at the dais and receive a certificate of achievement and proclamation, which I will read. Recognition of a Newburgh Free Academy teacher upon receiving Distinguished Fulbright Award in Teaching. Proclamation. Whereas Christine McCartney is a dedicated and exemplary Newburgh Free Academy English language arts teacher, and whereas Christine McCartney serves as a teacher consultant for the Hudson Valley Writing Project, and whereas Christine McCartney has demonstrated through her career an interest in increasing the mutual understanding between the people of the United States and the people of other countries, and whereas Christine McCartney applied for the Fulbright program for a grant to travel abroad to conduct research and teaching as part of its international educational exchange program, and whereas the J. William Fulbright Foreign Scholarship Board recently announced that on the basis of her academic and professional achievement, Christine McCartney has been awarded a distinguished Fulbright Award in a teaching grant to conduct research in Finland. And whereas during her six month stay in Finland, Christine McCartney will study at the University of Tampere, conduct seminars for local teachers and students, and research how Finnish teachers utilize formative assessments in their classrooms. Whereas as a result of her research and teaching activities abroad, Christine McCartney will contribute to the improvement of student achievement at Newburgh Free Academy and the Newburgh and Large City School District. And whereas Christina McCartney has brought honor upon herself, her family, Newburgh Free Academy, the Newburgh and Large City School District, and the community, then therefore be it resolved that the President and members of the Newburgh and Large City School District Board of Education and the Superintendent of Schools hereby recognize and congratulate Christine McCartney for her academic and professional achievement upon receiving a distinguished full, full white award in a teaching grant. Wish her success in her upcoming stay abroad and celebrate the impact that she continues to have upon the youth of Newburgh. Last in our recognition tonight, but certainly not the least, our third honoree, Christopher, Christopher Ekes, is well known to us because of his leadership of the NFA Solar Car Project, which has brought accolades to our district. Christopher is a physics teacher at NFA, and his students appreciate the positive impact he has had upon their lives and careers. Recently, students nominated Mr. Ekes to be recognized by WHUD as Teacher of the Month, and WHUD obliged. Mr. Ekes was selected as October's Teacher of the Month. We are very proud of this award, honoring someone who has the interest of our students at heart. I would like to invite Chris to join us at the dais and receive a certificate of achievement and a proclamation, which I will read. Sorry, we got one more to go. Mr. Ekis 
also was honored by the Optimist Club as a teacher as well. <laughs> Recognition of Newburgh Free Academy teacher for outstanding school and community work. Proclamation. Whereas Christopher Ekes is a committed and dedicated Newburgh Free Academy physics teacher, and whereas Christopher Ekes serves as the Newburgh Free Academy solar car advisor, and whereas Christopher Ekes strives to continuously perform outstanding work at Newburgh Free Academy, the district, and the community, and whereas 100.7 WHUD requests and receives monthly nominations from local students for the Teacher of the Month Award, and whereas local students are encouraged by WHUD to nominate for the award exceptional middle and high school teachers or coaches, and whereas Christopher Ekes was nominated by Newburgh Free Academy students for making a difference in the lives of his students and his community, and whereas Christopher Ekes was recently selected as October's WHUD Teacher of the Month from among the collected nominations, and whereas Newburgh Free Academy and the Newburgh and Large City School District are proud to count Christopher Ekes as a member of their staff, and therefore be it resolved that the President and members of the Newburgh and Large City School District Board of Education and the Superintendent of Schools hereby recognize and congratulate Christopher Ekes upon receiving the WHUD October Teacher of the Month Award, symbolizing his positive impact upon the youth of Newburgh Free Academy, the district, and the community, and wish him continued success in his work with our youth. Thank section, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pizzo. I'm going to give a minute for some people to clear out and we'll continue. and comment on agenda items. Um, I do have a list here of people who turned their names in and they will be heard first. Comments will be limited to five minutes duration per speaker, whether speaking individually or on behalf of an organization unless extended by the majority of the vote of the board. Uh, for a total of uh, speaking time of 30 minutes on agenda items. All statements shall be directed to the board. No participant may address or question board members or administrators individually. And speakers may comment on matters of public interest involving school operations and programs, but may not criticize or personally attack any person connected with the school district. First person I have signed up for agenda items is John DeMeo. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to see how many hands, who here in this building right now, has, as a parent, has lost a child? You know what I'm talking about. If you did not lose a child, it's not like losing a mother, father, where you expect it. 
Now, there's a way, you know what I'm talking about, the security. There's three options that we have. Number one, we hire security guards that are armed. If we can't afford it, then the next step is we have the National Guards, or we have our troops that are in the reserves. Then that doesn't cost any money. But to get that done, you have to stand up and speak to the president. Now, if the president said he's the president, he's the man, now he has to prove it to us that he cares about this country. We have children. I'm now 55 years old. I lived a long time, I've always lived the right way. I, my kids have always lived the right way. My son is nine years old. He's in New Windsor Elementary School. And not only am I speaking for my son, but for all the other children and the parents here. We do not need this to happen. This is not going to stop in Newton. You have nuts out there. They're slipping through us. Now we have to take, as they say, the Calhouns by the hand. If you tell me that you can't do it, then I'll stay every day at that school. I'll make sure nobody gets in that school. I don't belong there. That's what we're asking for. For me, it's not going to cost me nothing. I'm retired, so I'll stay there. Now we have no problem. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Marianne Kozlowski. Basil and Christy Tong. Sharika McCartney. Can't read the first name. Uh, Gil. Mr. and Mrs. Gill. John Finnegan, Andy and Christy Finnegan. And Stephen Hurley. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the board. I come tonight, obviously, with, uh, as it says on there, with some security concerns. Obviously, Friday was, was a very sad day in the United States. But something came to light when I picked my children up on Friday at the New Windsor Elementary School. Last year, we had an individual that would check our ID. Now we have to push a buzzer for something to come open the door. I think on Friday we found out the buzzer don't work. We want an individual back sitting there as a security guard. No longer can we accept the buzzer to be answered. That's a problem. I don't know why the school board eliminated the individual that sat there as security. And from what I'm hearing, it was done throughout the district in all elementary schools. Hopefully everybody watched Sunday evening, the President of the United States. He said, we can't tolerate it no more. I can tell you that we in New Windsor Elementary will not tolerate a buzzer. <laughs> we will move forward with a motto, body, not buzzer. The President of the United States said, it's our responsibility. It's mine, my wife, and the children at home. And school board, you have to take steps to protect my children when they're at school. Yes. Eliminating a security guard, installing a buzzer, doesn't help. He asked a few questions to the President of the United States, and I don't always agree with him, but I think he hit the nail on the head the other night. Can we honestly say that we're doing enough to keep our children safe? Not one in this room can say we are. And the President of the United States said that. We need to take action. And I'm calling on the board to start immediately to put a body in every school to check everyone that comes in those doors. Yes. I will not accept the buzzer. You should not accept the buzzer. I don't know if all the school board members are aware that there's a buzzer. That's how people get into school. There's no one longer checking and being a security guard in the schools, especially in the winter. 
That concerns me. I honestly ask you to revisit that. I got a letter from the school uh, superintendent today. Very kind words that they're revisiting the whole process. Hopefully, you'll change the process and put someone there. So we come back. I, I'd like to see it start tomorrow, but at least after the holidays. We heard tonight there's intervention. I hope to God we never get to that point where we need the services of an intervention. We need to take steps to protect our children. And I ask you, seriously, stop. We no longer can tolerate this. Put us body in the building. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurley. Those are all the names that I have to speak on agenda items. Uh, there is still more time. If there's anyone that would like to speak at this time on agenda items, please step to the podium and give your name and address. Jamira Torres Murphy. I'm a um, I also echo the feelings that most of the parents in this room are uh, uh, speaking today about. Um, I strongly believe as well that uh, we are definitely not keeping our children as safe as they should be. Um, Friday was a, something that touched every one of us so closely so close in location that many of us have friends that uh, got affected by such a terrible <coughs> tragedy. And I haven't been able to stop thinking about this since it happened. Um, <coughs> there's nothing parents could have done to prevent this tragedy. There's probably nothing that the school could have done to prevent this tragedy. But I think other tragedies could be prevented by having somebody there manning each, each door, you know, somebody that's uh, trained to deal with situations of this, this kind. Um, and I'd like to you know, take it a step further from the gentleman that just spoke. Um, hopefully the President of the United States will take action and will do something. <clears throat> but I certainly would, la would like to challenge this district to be trailblazers, um, to be you know, first and step up and you know, take, take action before even it's mandated to us and do something. I think. Uh, Every taxpayer in this entire district will be willing to pay an additional, you know, ten dollars a month to man each, each, to have a person in each school, especially elementary school. I, I think all schools should, but especially elementary school. We need to do what we can to avoid tragedies like this, and uh, we're really begging you guys to take this extremely seriously, and we're counting on you. I think we're in your hands. I mean, there's not much that we can do and use the parents to help you get this through. I mean, do whatever you need to do. I, I'm sure we can get the word out to get parents to get involved in this. Um, it is extremely important that, you know, we don't let this thing go by the wayside and let people just forget about it. We can't forget about it. This is extremely serious and we need to take action. And I really want you guys to not let this uh, disappear from all of our minds and that uh, very soon that we can address this very seriously. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Perez Murphy. Thank you. Hi, my name is Michelle Gould. And my concern is that we did not receive a letter from our superintendent um, with the parents. And my concern is that I am a, an interventionist. Um, I work in trauma. And I do not ever want to see what happened in Connecticut occur anywhere else in the country. But we need a connection with our superintendent, um, and we all need to be on the same page as far as making sure that our children are safe um, in our community. And it starts here, because we pay taxes to make sure that our kids are safe. Um, we happen to have security at our school. Um, we do have two buzzers that you need to get into, into Temple Hill. My concern was with I, what I feel was the lack of um, a letter or anything coming home from the superintendent in regards to our district um, in speaking and communicating with our parents. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Cools. <laughs> I can't see you, you're behind the dais, but uh, I, 
I, we did send letters home, letters from myself, and uh, they went to all parents today. I, I hope everybody got them today. Pardon me? And some, of them, some of them went yesterday. And, and also the letter that was sent from our so, uh, sociologist and, and our psychologist went out today. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you did. Thank you. All right. Excuse me. Excuse me. We don't. We don't need to get in a debate over it. But uh, our letter is online. Both of them. It's on the in, district in, website. On the district website, and it's been there. And uh, if it was a day late or whatever to, to get to you, I apologize for that. Mm -hmm. I'll try to be quicker next time. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Good evening. Um, my name is Hazel Nieves. And I have a son at Foster Town Elementary School. I met with several of uh, you yesterday morning, uh, and I was accompanied by several other parents from Foster Town School. Um, and it was uh, pointed out to me that I needed to actually address the board. <laughs> Uh, because it is the board who uh, makes, uh, has a discussion about security and then votes on whether or not to reinstate uh, the security at our schools. Um, I just wanted to reiterate what I mentioned yesterday, that not only do we need buzzards and we need the cameras, but we also need security. We need a phys the physical presence there at the door so that we do not have our teachers, our students, and other personnel as our doormen. So we need a physical person who is trained to, uh, to meet that person at the door, to question them, to find out where they're going into the building, and to make sure that they're signing in and going through all the proper procedures. I wanted to again state that when it was decided in the spring that security would be eliminated, that was it. There was no backup plan. Uh, I understand that buzzards were going to be installed. I was told yesterday there were some complications with parts not being, not fitting, they were the wrong parts. I just can't accept that. We, this decision was took place months ago, and you've had several months to fix the issue. And unfortunately now, because there's a tragedy, it seems like everyone's moving a little bit more quickly now. I hope, board members, that you understand that we want security at our schools, in all our schools. Mr. Levenstein, you have a son at Foster Town School. I am there every day, and I see what goes on. The security is inconsistent. <coughs> I'm not saying that the doors are always unlocked. They're sometimes locked. I know now they're always locked. Now everyone is on their toes. But it's, it's taken a tragedy for this to happen. I don't want it to happen in any school, let alone my school. That's why I'm always there every day, because I want to see what goes on. And I want to report to my principal what goes on and what I see because that's my child, my only child, and I don't want any harm to come to any child at that school or any child in our school district. I shake and I tremble before you. I cannot get over what happened on Friday, and I don't want to get over it. I sit and I watch the news and I hear it as I drive my car because I do not want to forget. I don't want to get over it. And I implore you, board members, 
don't, I hope in, in a week or a month from now, it's, we, we don't think of this as yesterday's news. And forget, we cannot <laughs> forget these are helpless children. So you have to make every effort to protect them. We cannot stop a maniac, but we have to make every effort to make it as difficult as possible. And I also want, and I brought this up, we have to connect with our local authorities and have the town police do the drive. I mean, if they're standing in Walmart, okay, every day, we can have them patrolling our schools. So that is a discussion that has to be made with our local authorities. Thank you. Hello, my, my name is Kathleen Simonovich. Um, my son is in kindergarten at Bonville. Um, elementary school and myself am appalled with the lack of security or just the lack of organization at the school. Um, I'm not the person who picks up or drops off my child. Um, we have someone that does that and I, on certain days I'll go and pick up the school officials or any of the teachers. They have no clue who I am. They let me in, pick up my son. They don't know I'm his, his mom and there's nothing in place. I've never been ID'd. I've never been stopped. I just walk right in. Every day I drop off my son and I feel total disorganization. And every day I worry for his safety at school, whether somebody could just walk in. I know the door isn't always locked. Um, and I just would really, urge the board to reconsider to have some type of security, whether it be a security officer. It shouldn't be the job of the teachers and the office staff to have to ID us or check us at the door because they're already busy doing their jobs and they shouldn't have another job on top of that. So as a concerned parent, I just urge that security is available in the schools. I would just like to add one, two things to uh, I'm Gina Hurley, I have some disease. Uh, my children go to New Windsor Elementary School, and we did have somebody at our door, and uh, she was only there. We had somebody before last year that was different than the, the woman that we had this last past year. She knew every single person that she needed to know that came into that school. If she didn't know them, she pushed us to the side because she needed to know who that was. The teachers that are in our school now, they're hopping from, they have to do this, oh, they have to go there, they have to go here. Oh, I have to sit at the front door now for 20 minutes. They don't know every single parent. They don't know who we are. We could be that nut. They don't know who we are. And you are trusting them with our kids' lives. And that's unfair. That woman was there. She started in September of last year. She knew every one of us before the end of September. She knew who was coming in and out of that school all the time. She questioned us. She said to me, Miss Hurley, you better get your license out. I don't care if I know you. I don't care if you sit at my table. You better get your license out. But she didn't let the next guy even come near her front desk. She was standing up. The teachers, they don't know who's coming in and out. And the other thing is, our office is behind. They don't even know who's buzzing that door. Some lady <laughs> standing at the front desk. Oh, oh, I'll get it. They go and open the door. They don't know who these people are. It's not their job. 
There should be a security guard at that front door. There should be a camera on that front door pointing out so you know who's coming near that door. It shouldn't be, that guy shouldn't have even been able to get to that front door. There should have been cameras out there. There's cameras everywhere. There's nothing taking care of our kids. Should we take our kids all out of school so that we know that we're security on our children until there's a security guard in the school that we can feel safe to let our kids go back to school? What should we do? Should we wait and you know give you time to think this out, try to figure this out? This should have been done Monday morning. This should have been a security guard at every one of the schools. Thank you, Mr. Curley. My name is John Mitchellon. I want to reiterate from the previous speaker about the Bonville School. Um, about two, three weeks ago, I had my uh, first parent-teacher conference. I have a daughter in pre-K. I was really excited about that. This is my first school board meeting. I really wish it would be on better terms that I came to this meeting. Um, I, think, I think everybody in this room has bosses and people that we have to be accountable to. And I think everybody on the board, you have bosses as well. Everybody in the, in the room understands what the is is right now. And the situation is our kids aren't safe. Everybody also understands what the should be is. We should make our kids safe. Um, I think if I was in my situation at work, I'd have a boss who would tell me to put it on a one piece paper these are the steps involved, these are the costs involved. Lay it out. We understand that's going to cost money. Put it on a piece of paper and communicate it. We could talk about it till our heads fall off, but let's put something down on paper, communicate it to the taxpayers, and let's go from there and take the steps that we need to to make your kids safe. Thank you. Excuse me, I'm not a public speaker, so I'll try my best. Um, my name is Josie White, and I met with a few of you yesterday with Hazel Nieves, and um, so you know me. And um, as that gentleman was saying, I would like to take it on just one step further and go as to say, we got a letter today stating that there was some suspicious activity in the parking lot of Forster Town after we met yesterday. Now, this was very upsetting to me because I tend to think that there are a lot of crazy people in this world who like nothing better than to copycat things that have gone on in this world. So, we are very vulnerable. There are crazy people around us all over. And if they see how vulnerable we are, they might take it a little step to get their public face in, in the pictures, excuse me, of their face in public. I don't want that to happen to any of us. I don't want to lose my daughters. I'm here at 8.30, 8 o'clock, they should be in bed. But I wanted to be here to see you guys because you need to fight for us and put security back into our school. We don't want no one knowing how vulnerable we, vulnerable we are. And you guys are in charge of this. They're going to say, what happened? They had a big meeting, and nobody paid any attention and just went about their business. And we're still sitting there going into the schools, ringing the bell, hoping a mother will come or another parent or teacher will come in, say, oh, hi, how are you? Here's your sticker. Go on ahead without even asking who I am or where I'm going. So please do me a favor, and please pay attention to what we're telling you. Our school taxes are high. So they should be going towards some security guards here, okay? Because I know I pay a lot of money towards, secure, um, towards my school taxes. Please forgive me, I'm a little nervous, but I hope I got my point across. Please take care of us and us parents here, because I don't want to lose my child, because there are copycats. Just please take that into your mind. Thank you. Thank you.
Sheila Monk, City of Newburgh. Um, I have a daughter who go to NFA, and my problem is NFA have too much security guards. Okay, <laughs> but seriously, um, just going into school is like going to a prison. The metal detectives. I don't know what kind of tragedy I had at NFA, but I hear a lot of parents here saying security, security. Maybe they could take some security guards at NFA and put them in the schools, the other school, because they had about 20 or 30 up there. And also, I have another problem last week. My daughter had texted me in, in her class. They had, she said it, was a, uh, it wasn't a um, fire drill, but they had them locked in the classroom with the doors locked, and they had uh, dogs and like 20 police cars, and the, door, the dogs were just coming up to the, uh, the door. So she had texted me, and I had called the school. And the secretary, she said she lied to me twice, not once, but twice. Told me it was a, a fire drill, which I knew it wasn't. So I told her, because it's a fire drill, so why y'all had the kids locked in the classroom with the dogs in the school? I said, that's not a fire drill. She said, oh, yes it is. I said, okay. So I called the board of education trying to get someone. Didn't go through. So I called her again, and I said, okay, my daughter just texted me that stated it was not a fire drill. I would like to know from the board, what is it that, what kind of drill y'all have and did y'all have these kids locked in their classrooms with 20 police cars and dogs going through the school? It's a lockdown. It's a lockdown. What's she saying? A lockdown. Good evening. Excuse me. I just want to respond to the, the last speaker. Um, periodically throughout the year, we run drug tests and we, we work collaboratively with the city police. Um, we don't send out information like this so as to give a, um, up to, to, to uh, uh, give a heads up or a preliminary to students because there's specific reasons why those dogs are in that school. The dogs are there with all professional handlers, walking around with the administrators, along with the director of security, Mr. Young. So this was a planned event, lockdown, and we don't want the students to interact with the dogs. That's why they were confined to their classrooms. Yeah, I do, because my daughter had just relocated from another state. So she was nervous. When she came home, she was like, she's not used to that. And she was like, Mommy, what's, you know, what's going on? The teacher, her math teacher had called me and stated, you know, he had told her to get off the phone, but she was scared. She was scared. So I said, I was going to dress this at the board of education. Thank you, Ms. Monk. Good evening. My name this will is be Jill. the last speaker for this portion of the public comment session. My name is Jill Fashana. I'm a grandmother, but I'm also a retired director of pupil services for a small city school district in Western New York. I have volunteered at my grandson's school and I actually had a chance to visit and pick up my sixth granddaughter today at South Middle School. Two years ago, I volunteered in the library and you had a security guard. I was very impressed. It worked very well. This year, I volunteer. I've been over there about three times. There is no security guard. And as the people here have explained, that's exactly what's happened to me. I get a little sticker. Some people check. Some people don't and sometimes I have to wait easily. I could walk out of that office and do as I please in that building. I'm sorry, can you clarify which building you're speaking of? This is Horizons. This is Horizons. Okay, thank you. I don't think these people are asking for very much. The discussion on TV is all over the place. They're asking for exactly what I sort of thought would be in place Monday morning from this district and I called my daughter and I said, was there a security guard at Horizons? There was not. I am wondering why we had this philosophy, better to be safe than sorry for our school district. It may have cost a little bit of money, but this week to have security guards for five days would have been a nominal cost to make these parents in your community feel like a response came from you. I 
Our next item on the agenda is from the board president. I have the adoption of revision to policy number 7510, community use of facilities. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Mr. Levenstein. Um, comment I have on this policy is that we, we created fees for uh, public to use the buildings and we took one of those fees in, in a private organization and we said that they don't they don't have to participate in that fee and they have just a, a yearly fee that, that is basically 95 percent less than the fee we put in the policy. I'm not saying that we shouldn't let them use it for that cost, but I don't think it should be in policy giving a private organization that kind of reduction in cost. Mr. Pasella, can you by any, Mr. Velez is not here this evening, can you by any chance speak to that? I don't know which organization he's talking about. Okay, well, he's not talking the, about the pool. Yeah, that, that's been established from the Newburgh Sharks. Yeah. Yeah, that was established years ago, and I, didn't, I don't know where it's gone since then because of the facilities use and the changes in the fees. Well, my point is, I'm not saying you shouldn't give that to them. I think it should be voted every year like it has been. I don't think we should put it in policy that that is the, this private organization's fee not and for and where everyone everyone else has a separate fit. That's that's my point. There's no other there's no other private organizations that get a reduction there. And they and they might they come to the board and go to building new grounds. Hey, Mr. Levenstein, I didn't have anything to do okay, with that not, that policy or even the fee. Yeah. Okay. I might add a little bit, uh, since Mr. Velez is in here, I don't know if you want to table this or uh, what the board wants to do, but uh, it has to do with the, uh, the, the contributions they make, which are non-cash uh, value. They, they buy certain supplies throughout the year for the pool, and the pool was used by everyone, uh, so they, uh, they give in kind rather than pay in cash for the entire amount. But uh, I don't know the amounts. Uh, we'd have to get that from Mr. Boyce. Does anyone else on the board want to speak to not having that in the actual policy and just having the pool fee in the policy? What are, what are your feelings on that? Because that seems to be the issue with, that yeah, you're raising, I, Mr. Levenstein, I, is that yes. Just that going out the, the, the lower price for the prior and having them like they have the previous years come every year and ask it. And I'm not saying not give it to them that price. I just don't think it should be a policy that maybe we'll look at five years from now. So I, mean, I, I don't think that it should be there. <coughs> Mr. Shaw. If the policy doesn't have a potential for an exception, then they would be required to pay according to policy. You, you can't have a resolution or a use application override policy. So there, there has to be some reference in policy, if not a reduced rate or what seems to be a reduced rate, maybe the potential for an exception based upon whether it's an in-kind or other goods and services um, being credited towards the fee in some rational way. So perhaps there should be an amendment to this rather than passing it um, without the reference, which then would mean you'd have to change policy again to make the exception. So, Mr. Shaw, what would what would an amendment to this look like? There would be an asterisk after the um, six hundred dollars a day, 
and the asterisks would read, um, provided that by resolution, other um, the arrangements may be approved by the Board of Education. Mrs. McAfee. I agree with what Mr. Shaw is saying, but I would think that the asterisk should go someplace where it's more generic. Uh, it, it, am I not correct that in the past there have been, with the town of Newburgh and New Windsor, I think, in-kind agreements? So it's not just the sharks then who have those <coughs> uh, agreements. And, and I, so I, I think the asterisk should go somewhere, David, where it's, it's obvious that, that it's not just the pool, in other words. Exactly. Yeah. I think the town of Newburgh uses, you know, some soccer fields. Yeah, and uh, we we have arrangements for salt and sand during the winter in lieu of use of fields, etc. We've been doing that for a number of years. So, David, where else could you ask? It, it could go. Um, <laughs> it could go to after the deposit, and maybe we need a double after. So there would be, you would physically strike the 2,500 per year for sharks, and the asterisk would be a double as asterisk, and it would come after the deposit asterisk on page 7 of 7 above number 13. Basically saying there might be reasons why it would be in kind right. uh, or, or other arrangements. Yeah. So it would say, by resolution, other fee arrangement other fee arrangements may be approved by the Board of Education. Any of the other board members want to speak to that before I ask for the amendment to this? So can I have um, a motion to amend this policy to read with a double asterisk Whatever you just read there. Yeah, please. <laughs> by resolution, other fee arrangements may be approved by the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Kokosh? Yes. Mr. Gresh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Okay. Yes. So can I have a motion for the adoption of the amended revision to policy number 7510, community use of facilities? So Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Prokosh? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. What point of uh, clarification? striking of the $2,500 for the sharks. The amended resolution was double asterisk and the striking of the $2,500 for the sharks. Our next item on the agenda that I have is security concerns at elementary schools. Um, last week, prior to this tragedy, um, the board did ask for um, an assessment, a risk assessment to be done in regards to security guards at our elementary buildings. Um, that was prompted by the previous month's board meeting and a group of concerned uh, community members, parents, that brought forth the petition to the Board of Education. So that risk assessment has been done and I believe it's in our extra handouts um, and I would like to use that as we discuss the issues and concerns that were brought forth to us this evening by the community and, and by our parents in the district, as well as this risk assessment um, that has been brought forth to us. Mr. Pacella is here. Is Mr. Young here? Yes, Mr. Young and Ms. Howard. Mr. Young is here and um, Mrs. Howard, and I apologize, I don't know your new last name. So, <laughs> so um, but they oversee our security, and um, 
Ms. Howard can, can speak to um, NFA in, in particular. So um, I open it up for discussion amongst the board um, based upon this risk assessment and also um, the communities and parents' issues and concerns that have been brought forth before us this evening. Can we get a copy of that risk assessment? Is that public? Yes, but if you could speak to the board clerk after the meeting since we shouldn't be recognizing the public in this portion of the meeting. Very good, thank you. Yes, Ms. Prokash. Well, as you know, I, I, uh, a few of us have brought this up before, um, for a long time before, last Friday. Um, and I'm glad that they did the assessment. It only solidifies my belief that we need a few things to be in place. But some of these I thought were in place that were not, and that is, I think every school needs to have a buzzer with a camera. That's that's a, that's that big. And I had asked earlier this year, and I thought that we had talked about it last spring when we did make the cuts in elementary that we were going to redeploy some um, security from the high school to the elementary schools. And I stand by that. Um, I also would like us to look into, uh, which we've talked about before, um, the cost of the swipe cards for uh, faculty to be able to get in so they can simply swipe and go, go through the door that way when they're coming to work. Um, as we know, and I don't think there's a board member that doesn't feel the same way as parents as far as security and safety for our children. Um, a couple of us on the board have taught in the district. I taught in the district for 33 years. There wasn't a day that went by that I was not concerned about the safety of your children. Nine of us that are sitting on the board believe that. And what happened last Friday is inconscionable. But we are, and we have been discussing, and we have to make every effort to secure buildings. Even if it's an illusion of control. You know, at one point, years ago, my principal put me outside with another teacher with 1,100 students. I stood at one side of the building outside, and she stood at the other with a walkie talk in her hand. And it was the illusion of control. And it worked. So we have to do that. Uh, whether it be, you know, in the future, some, you know, parents volunteering to help out in the interim and in different things, that's fine. But I do feel that we need to have a presence. Um, you know, we have to redeploy and, and make less at the high school. And unfortunately, right now, maybe we're going to have to do that to come up to the next budget vote. But I think we need to re redeploy. And make sure that by the end of winter break, if at all, is to have these buzzers in, in place. And I'd also like us to look into um, a swipe card situation for faculty. So if they take a, a student out or take their kids out for recess, they can swipe to get back in the door. Um, that sort of thing. I'll just before we go on, I'll just speak um, in regards to the swipe card, and I know you're aware of this, but for the clarification of everyone on the board, that is a negotiated contract item. Mr. Howard. Yes, Madam President. Um, in light of the conversation we have had there this, morning, this evening, uh, I would just like to say this needs assessment that we did request at our last meeting is, is, is uh, much appreciated. And it's scary that we had this conversation last Wednesday and uh, the event that happened in Connecticut happened on Friday and I was just, it scared me to death. And uh, 
the whole reason for asking for this needs assessment as I look at the different schools, as we had said in our meeting last week, one of the biggest concerns is the teachers handling the visitors access. And uh, we talked about, I talk, we talked with uh, Mr. Purcell with regards to the amount of security guards up at the high school. I, my question is, is there something that we can do on a pro tem basis with regards to security at these elementary schools until we can come up with something that could be final? Because, and as the parents say out here, you know, save for the grace of God, there go us. That could have been us, you know, it, it, but it wasn't. But is it something that we can do on a pro tem basis until we can handle this situation <coughs> in official capacity? That's why we're discussing that right now, absolutely. Mr. Woodhull? Yes, uh, those white cards were discussed probably seven years ago. We tried to bring it into a swipe card system, uh, but it was just too expensive at that time. The prices have now decreased dramatically. On those systems, uh, they not only would track the children, or the teachers, but they would also track children uh, there's, they can do almost everything else. They can pay for their lunch. They can get their library books. They can do any, almost anything with this uh, swipe card system today. The other thing we can do is look at the glass that's currently in the, the doorways. Uh, instead of just a plain sheet glass that we have there now, you go to a mesh glass with the wire in between the glass. And this you will not take and penetrate with one or two rounds of ammunition. Um, and it would take and provide more time for people to get out of the way. Now, I'm not saying security guard would at least then be able to take and call for help immediately. Uh, it might deter the person who's trying to get in more. All of this is just we're shooting from the hip right now and trying to take and figure out what's the best thing to do for our children. We need to have the cameras looking at the front doors. That's that's without question. Because at least then, if you hear something going on out there, you know and you can call the police. Other questions, comments? Mr. Levenstein. The assessment doesn't have all the elementary schools on it. I would say it for everyone. It was inadvertently not added. like to hear if um, anyone from the board has a recommendation in um, next steps regarding this. Yes, Mrs. McAfee. Why, why don't we you know, try to consolidate the comments that have been made as well as those made by the, the audience and, and make a proposal that some of the security from NFA will be reassigned basis to the elementary school until a final decision can be made. Uh, that would give us time to, to be thoughtful in our deliberation, uh, but would, I think, satisfy much of the concern that everyone's Mr. Lawson? I, I agree with Ms. McAfee. I would just add, too, that I think we should consider all possibilities. Um, there were a lot of suggestions. There was a lot of information shared. I'm sure we might as we start contemplating this and have been contemplating this, come up with some other scenarios. 
we should lay everything out so that we can really put together a comprehensive plan. One that looks to, you know, short term and, and immediate resolving this issue or dealing with this issue, but also planning to do what's best because, you know, the question is then, you know, just putting security guards, is that enough? You know, is, is there something else that we could be doing? Can we utilize volunteers in an organized um, um, way? Um, is there an opportunity for more police patrols to come around? What else can we do? So I don't, I, I really would like, I, I agree that we should digest everything, compile everything, get the best possible scenario out. I'm sure there's, everybody's watched and, and everybody's had a lot of stuff to say about this. Let's just figure out what's best for our kids and um, digest it and, and a, a short-term plan and a long-term plan. Yes, Ms. Resch. Also, along with putting the security guards back in, I go back and look at I think somebody over here mentioned, I don't remember who, but I think we're all on the same page. I think most of us did think that all well, the cameras and buzzers were, were in place, so I think that's something we need to like, do tomorrow. From what I understand, um, that is the ones that are not in place are scheduled to be installed during the Christmas break. So um, the superintendent will verify that tomorrow. Um, but yes, absolutely. Yes, Mr. Woodhull. Yes, you know, I totally agree with Mrs. McAfee here. Uh, let's bring back a guard out of you know, the high school uh, to each one of the elementary schools. Uh, this is a situation that none of us have ever been through before, thank God. And hopefully we never will be. But at least if we can get the guards back in the buildings, get the cameras, get the buzzers, we can control the egress for buildings and access. Uh, so I totally agree. Mr. Purcell, I'm going to ask you if um, if you know at this time if that is a possibility to um, at least for this week um, to be able to redeploy um, current staff out to our elementary buildings until we can further discuss this and have a long range plan in place. Well, what you're looking at, you're looking at seven elementary schools that don't have the coverage. So. I guess you're looking to redeploy seven of the current security guards out of the high school into each one of the elementary schools. Certainly you know that that will create a hole at, at the site of the NFA. Um, NFA currently runs four shifts of security guards. Um, in the morning by 7.45, I'll just run down what the, their assignments. There's 16 guards that come in at 7.45 for four entrances. At the north cafeteria side, there's two metal detectors set up. The lower lobby has four metal detectors set up. There's one in the humanities cafeteria, and there's three in the main lobby. All of them are manned um, with a security monitor. Out on the streets at Rowe Fuller, Row and Fullerton, if you've ever gone by the high school, you know that there's severe traffic uh, situations between parents coming in the wrong uh, way and then yes. coinciding with the buses. So we have a security monitor on the, on the corner of Rowe and Fullerton, and then we have the police officer, the CRO, that's been hired from the city of Newburgh, is also out on the corner of uh, the entrances to the high school. There's a security monitor monitoring the top lanes where the buses go, and there is a security monitor on the cart monitoring the north lot where the drop-off point for the parents are supposed to be as well as the parking lot. There's a couple of guards stationed inside of the other exits in the wings and the gym area as they're also very problematic with students that get in through the lower lobby, will go around the back and open up the door for their friends to come into that entrance. So we're trying to secure all of them. And we also have one monitoring the, uh, the breakfast duty. Uh, so at all, at 8.15, 8.30, all of those guards, at 16 guards, they start sweeping the halls for the late bell and start moving the students in. Remember, there's 2,600 students in at this point. There's 300 student, uh, at adults the main at campus. the main campus alone I'm speaking at. So there's 3,000 people in a four acre area. Wow. Um, there at 8.30, all the metal detectors are shut off except for the lower lobby where all the students that come in later are directed into going. And at 8.30, all security guards are then at their posts throughout the building. There's two in the cafeteria, the South Humanities, there's one each in the South 
uh, cafeteria, one in the humanities, humanities area. Um, and in the tardy room, there's also one station uh, taking attendance, swiping their cards, letting them know where they should be. At 9 o'clock, uh, I'm sorry, at, that's at 8.30. Those, there's two more that come in uh, to help for that situation. At 9 o'clock, three guards come in. Uh, they, they guard the base, base station with the can, cameras and monitors, um, which is currently covered by a teaching assistant from 7.40 to 8.30 due to the lack of the personnel that we have for that, that shift. And at 10.30 to 6 o'clock, we have two guards because we have the coverage needed on the, the back end of the school day. There's two guards that come in for that shift, and then there's three guards at the 11 to 6.30 shift. So can, is there enough guards mathematically at 23 to shift seven to the elementary schools? Yes. Will there, will there be severe gaps at the school, at the high school, if this is done? Yes. Uh, I did speak with Melissa uh, Siegel today, and I spoke with Matt Dotto also at the North Campus. Uh, Matt Dotto currently has one level of the, the North Campus uncovered because he has six guards and a thousand students. Um, so they're constantly going up and the, the administrators are constantly making the rounds up to those floors that aren't covered. Um, I know there was discussion during the budget process regarding after the, the, the uh, metal detectors are done and then having them go to the, the elementary schools after that. So you have travel issues. You have only five elementary schools that start on the third shift the third line shift of our start times for the high schools at our second line. So to have a security guard come in at the early shift for the elementary school, I believe is Horizons, and then to the high school, um, I don't know if we're dealing with any contractual issues, but I don't know the level that you want the elementary schools covered. Is it from start to finish? Is it part time? Is it at a certain time of the day? Is it at when they come in? Is it at the end? These are, these are directions I need from you. I, and please jump in, um, fellow board members. I, it's my understanding that it would be coverage from uh, the start to the end of the school day, specifically um, to monitor the people coming in and out of each building. Mr. Levenstein. Uh, I don't know if you really could take seven people from that situation to be employed. We, well, we have guards at the high school, the two high schools, we have them. At two middle schools, we have guards. I don't know if there's extra there. And we have it at two middle schools. So I think no matter what, we are going to have to hire some people. To do it, you're not going to be able to pull seven guards from there and put it in the field. So, I mean, if maybe if we had, we're able to gather half, would be wonderful. But we'd have to get three new people, and it's just a matter of is it going to come from five pounds or whatever. But if you want to cover it, I don't think you can plan on taking seven people out of, of existing situations. Mr. Howard. Uh, Madam President, uh, weren't there some security guards that were laid off at the last budget cut that we could possibly call back? Well, that's what Mr. Levinson is talking about, is rehiring. Oh, okay, so instead of taking from the, uh, the numbers already in the fake, because that seems like those numbers are needed up there, I think that's the option we should look at. So, so you're saying to hire them all back. Not right. all, but I mean, well, the numbers to cover those schools. Right. Yes. Right. Mrs. McAfee. If I was, you know, keeping count correctly, I think Mike said uh, that there are three places where we have security directing traffic. There's, um, our own security monitors are at the corner of Rowan Fullerton um, and at the, the north lot where the students park and also where teachers park and where parents are supposed to drop off their students. So is that three different places? Those are two, and then we have the CRO uh, out on the street also. The community resource officer, the police officer. I mean, to, to me, you know, we, don't, we don't have to provide traffic cops. Well, well I, can only, I can only answer that we've almost had a few fatalities because students and parents are not listening or abiding by signs, and we've we've had actually students hit. That's true. Yeah. And and I, I having actually had an accident, uh, you know, on Fullerton Avenue at, at the intersection with Row. I, I can I can you know sympathize with that, but at the same time, how far does our responsibility extend? I mean, now we're trying to cops. No, no, we're not. No, I, I don't want you to get to 
misconception about traffic cops. We're making sure our students don't get hit. Uh, they're at the corner. They're not down the road. They're at the corner of the turn-in. We prohibit people from turning into Row Street where they're not supposed to. To, from, to, to come in to drop off their students, they have to go around the school and drop off in the north lot because that's where buses are coming. So we have someone, we have a security monitor at that corner to make sure only buses are coming in and required staff. This is probably a stupid question, Val, but in other communities, the, 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 the town cops, you know, monitor the, the schools during the, you know, the, the, that time period when children are being brought to school by buses or by parents. Now, you go to a community like Washingtonville, for example, you're going to find the Washingtonville cops are at those schools. Uh, um, you know, why is it impossible for us to you know, say much of well, I think that the city police force only has a few people on duty at specific shifts. Uh, you certainly know that I've discussed police matters with the, with city council. I'm asking the question so that everybody hears the frustration. Yeah, and and certainly you know I've been very frustrated dealing with city city leadership regarding police presence at their largest site in their community. I mean, they have a responsibility, and I don't care where the students come from, the school is in the city of Newburgh. And this is what we've expressed to them. They are running into budget problems way worse Why? than we have. So that's the only answer I, I've gotten from them. Ms. Prokosh, and then um, I believe Mrs. Howard, and she's going to give me her correct new name when she comes up, wants to say something. And then Mr. Lawson, I know you wanted to say something. Ms. Prokosh? Um, there's three, three outside on the board in the uh, parking lots? There's one on Ron Fullerton, one on the top lane of the buses where the buses are coming in. There's one in the cart in the north lot where the drop-offs are. That's three. Correct. And the police officer. Well, those three that are out in the parking lot, they're there until the students get into school at 15, right? They just need a third. They're, they're there until the buses drop off. Okay. So why couldn't those, at least those three, then be deployed to elementary schools from that point? They're already outside. I'm not saying they can't. I'm okay. saying if that's what you determine, that's that's what we'll have to manage with. But it will create a deficiency at the rest of the school. I which think for the next few days, <coughs> that's the important. So Christmas and then discuss it even further. You know, the same thing with, with the city at, at, at Bay North. Same as six? Yes. For how many students? Um, just, uh, just under a thousand. Okay, we did it with four, with 1,200 at NSA, when it was North June. I'm not sure we had the metal detectors. The metal detectors are the most problematic to get them all to start scoring. If they come in, then you don't have to worry about metal detectors. You've got somebody at the main, main, main foyer, correct? Well, we have, they're all manned because even students, believe it or not, even students don't listen well, about how they're supposed to go through metal detectors. Once the kids, once the students come in the building initially, then there's somebody at the main foyer for people that are coming in, correct? You mean after all the students have gone through the metal detectors? After school is in session, yes. Yes, right. Then, then you have someone that, that is at, at the, the main, main lobby, foyer, correct. At the, at the lobby. And then all the late... Well, all the late students that come in are supposed to go to the lower lobby to go through the metal detectors. At NFA North? Oh, I'm sorry. I switched back to the, the high school. No, I, I'm not. Miss Joyce can, or Miss Howard can tell you about the process at the North Campus. Well, you come in the front door, you go through the metal detectors, you check, and you go. I did my, I did my research at the main campus and spoke to Matt regarding it, what Miss Howard knows. That's what I'm here for tonight. Ask me your questions. I make the schedules. So you could ask me your questions as far as I think I think the misconception of that that that's what the guard does outside uh, and then he stays there or she stays there is no. We have no one but maybe two people on those massive floors with no guard once we bring them in. So that means the kids are floating around doing whatever because all the guards, the majority of them, are trying to get them through metal detectors. 
metal detectors is the purpose of making sure they don't bring the weapons in that they used to bring in, the drugs, the alcohol, <coughs> all those things that we're checking to make sure that they're safe, your child is safe in the schools, and drugs and things are not being passed through. We do catch all those things. That's what it's for. So we have to have that in place. One, while we're doing that, once they get in, we rush in the guys that are doing the bus check up at the top to for traffic. Because as it was said, parents that drop kids off run us over. Our parents that drop kids off won't stop for that stop sign that's on that bus. If that guard is not out there, they'll say, hold it, wait a minute. You put cones up there, we put horses up there, they'll move it around, somebody will get out, they'll move it, you talk to them, they curse you out. We do the best that we can on what we have. Once those buses are in, we let the parents come to the front and drop their students off. The guards rush in to get to the floors, to clear the floors and get the students to class. Then, once they're all in class, there's process of that. We have to do a sweep. Because kids, the bell rings at 8.15, which means that they're late. They're still all in the hallways because they know we're not in the hallways yet. So now we're sweeping to get them in the hallways for 15 minutes. They really are late because the first period started already. But because they know we're not there, their bodies are not there, they take their sweet old time. We get them in at 8.30. There's a mass of 300 kids, I can tell you, of parents dropping their kids off around 8.20, 8.25. So now those two people on metal detector now have to bring all those kids in and try to get the kids in before 8.30 so that we can get them a class, so that they're, they're there to get their education. 8.30, 8.15, now we're just clearing the halls. We're checking staircases. We're going back and relocking doors that have been left in, pencil stuck in the doors and different things to make sure that the outside all the way around the other side of the building, which is, I think people fail to realize, the tunnel where the kids come in for uh, weight, and all that football goody stuff, the doors are locked. We tell them all the time that, that in the back of the building is the worst unsafe area for the district at the high school because anybody can come off South Street and get there because the tunnel is it's not guarded. We just don't have it. So a body's always running around to the back of the building. We try to lock the fence. Somebody goes and unlock the fence. We tell them don't park there. Somebody go do that. We put a pencil in the door because they're sneaking out to get back in. There's all kind of stuff that the guard is constantly on the move for. If you remove a guard or two, we've moved them. You've, you've moved them. You're, you've cut back tremendous in this last four years. You've cut back in every school. You've cut back tremendous in the high school. You give me what I get, and I work with what I have at, those, at all the district schools, but I work with what you give me. To the best of our ability, I stagger them in. I come in at 6, I actually comes in at 5.30 in the morning. My schedule says 6.30. To make sure that everything is there in place, including the guards, I'm there at 5.30, 6 o'clock every morning. And I do not charge you, because I, I, I believe in what I do, to make sure that everything is there set and ready for them to go, and that the guards are there ready to go. Then the guards, two guards come in at 7.30. There's a group that comes in at 7.45, then 10, then 9. Like he said, we have a TA that helps us out, thank God, that helps me out in the base station because I'm working in the cafeteria. I do not sit in the office all day. You may call it, it rings, it goes to voicemail. I am not there, I am on the floor. We, you, I give, you give me what I have, that's what I work with. But remember when you take away, all the things you're expecting to be done at the high school is not gonna happen because I don't have the body to fulfill it. That is a civic center up at that high school. When all the guards leave at 6.30, there's still stuff going on, tremendous stuff still going on with the sports. The kids are all over the place, all over the place. They're opening doors, they're doing everything. 6.30 at night, we lock the, the doors the best of our ability. The custodians come to us all the time, but the kids are still in there, they open, they find the doors open, they find the kids all over the place all up until 11 o'clock at night. You, uh, you can't cover everything and everything that happens. 
But I believe that what was given to us to spread out and what the district has <coughs> is what we utilize to the best of our ability. You do a good job. <laughs> Mr. Lawson? Well, now that um, Sal has addressed this, I actually have a question. Um, so, in understanding the situation, what would you see as a solution to it? Would it be Mr. Howard's point about, you know, maybe getting some people back? Is that the, do you see that as being the, one of the main resolutions to this issue? <laughs> you want my union hat? Or you want my little, little well, I would say, look, at this point, at this point, you got to put on whatever hat you need to, to protect yourself. Because I, yeah. <laughs> I think the sentiment is, is that we want to do what, what is necessary to protect our children. And if you're saying that taking the guards away from the high school is going to create problems at the high school that you're already overwhelmed with, then we need to figure, again, my point uh, is to put everything on the table and figure out what the best solution is. And so you're in the best, you're in a very good position to give us some sort of information about what you might feel is a good solution to this. You said you want to talk about an, a solution for those two days, if that's what you're talking about, because there's two days left until the new year, then you need to hot. Well, my, my loss, I'm sleepy. That's <laughs> my bedtime. So it's three days to go, then you should hire for those three days. If that's what you want to do, you can't take away something that you, it, it, you, you, I can't fulfill the other obligation you're asking me to fulfill if you take away the staff that I have. People look at it and say, oh, you have 23. The massive work that has to be done at that high school. Come, walk in my shoe for a day. I trade places with any one of you and you be me and I be you and you'll tell me there's not enough at that high school. You'll tell me that's not enough. You guys want, I understand the tragedy. I almost lost my son to that school, the high school. Okay, the grace of God, he didn't die in the 12th grade. Because there weren't enough security in there, there were stabbings going on. Okay, there were no securities in those caps. There weren't no security good metal detectives really searching bags and knives and everything got in the schools. I don't want to see that happen to anybody's child. But something that's work, why are you trying to um, re re fix it? We're working at the best of our ability. If you need something else, you don't take from something that's working. You add, you figure it out, that you're going to cause a domino effect of going backwards. And that's what I see. You're going backwards, and you're not going ahead. So if there's something you need to do that you want to say to secure these parents, then put some people in there for three days while you sit around. If you want me to come during the Christmas break, not all my whole Christmas break, <laughs> but to sit down with you to see what plan you want to put together to say to deploy security through the rest of the district. That is something that you have to really think about and put that plan together. I certainly believe is my hat in the room. You decided because of the budget cut, and you know, at CSEA, we work with you guys. This is the union talking. We worked with y'all, but we took our zeros, and we took the understanding. We say, when it's decided that the seven were going to be cut, my first saying to the people, that's a safety issue. It's not a union issue. It's a safety issue. It's going to it's gonna come back to bite you. Because you aggressed to that, and you went backwards. And now it's here in your face. And, and, and you got to find a solution better that works. Because we're in a climate where there's no money. Right? And the parents have to understand that, too. And we have to work together to figure it out. But you can't blame one or the other and run scared because something happened. It did happen. It's a tragedy. But Newburgh, I believe, has become one of the safest districts around because you've been proactive. Don't, don't, don't start shaking now. You're you all right. Just move forward. Thank you.
Do you have another question? Yes. Um, if if um, for the next three days we had to um, employ substitutes, we have them to. There's there are seven that would be able to go in. Yes, you have laid off people that are on a layoff list. They're considered subs. That that you sub now. Yes, you laid off five full time and seventeen part time. It's five full time. Yeah. Yes. So, so you, you have we, them to go there. For, they would love to. <laughs> so if we, they, and they're fully versed on what needs to be done. Right. Okay. And the other thing is um, the protocol for people coming into the building, visitors. Is that um, the same in every building? It should be the same in every building. Right. Right. And is it being implemented? Um, is it being implemented the same in every building is what I'm asking. And, and if we it could, either you or you and Mr. Young at some point in time, visit buildings to make sure that the protocol is being followed in every building? That what I would say to you, when we had all the guards in it, they all had the same type of signing in. But I, if, if talk to um, Mike, my boss, which I love. We are working on, we brought a presentation about the, the kiosk and different things to help to, to that they're all on the same page um, with that. But that's your plan of action that we said that, the suggestion that we sit down with the department head and us to work out what you think is best for the whole entire district. And then we'd be on the same plan. But, but right now, everybody knows that you have to check IDs. Right. You have to check who's there and that it, all the employees should have on their badges. Well, with this last check thing, we did about 2,000 bad IDs for the employees. So everyone should have one. And they should be entitled. When they're going to build in the building, they should be wearing it. And even if they are an employee, if they're going to a different building, they should sign in. You know, because that's a safety issue. If something happens and they took the sign-in book, they would know who's in the building to locate them. So they shouldn't be afraid to sign in. I sign in wherever I go, right. I sign in. But I, what I was asking is that like when parents come in to pick the child up or go to the office, the protocol is the same in every building as far as showing your ID, uh, writing your name in the book, and getting a visitor's pass. Pretty much, except for there's some little uh, things that need to be worked out with principal on it because that comes into play too, that you have to be, you know, work with the principal, how they want to handle their building. But basically the first line should always be the security if they have one, if they're in the building, that where you going, um, state your purpose, and then move to the main office. Mr. Purcell? Yeah, as a result of this needs assessment, um, and unfortunately Mr. Forge is called away with APPR it, um, items with the state ed. Um, we recognize that it's not uniform across the district, and it really should be, um, so that we all know what's going on and we're not hit with this buzzer is not working, uh, this ID is not being checked. So we, we, are, we are addressing that, and with Mr. Forge and the principals, we'll be meeting with them after the break to discuss exactly the protocol that we expect to be followed. Um, for the longest time, principals have been managing their buildings, and some principals do it differently, and then when they go to another school or they get promoted, then they choose to do it that way, and then we just lose, lose handle on it. Um, I did mention to you that we looked at this um, company, Red Circle Solutions for Lobby Guard. It was mentioned earlier about an ID system. Um, this Lobby Guard, and I have the quote here for all of our schools, to be $90,000 throughout the district would be to put a kiosk in every building and whenever the ID is shown to whether it's an office manager or a principal or whoever that's guarding that door on the, whether it's on a duty or whatever it is that license would go into this and get scanned into this kiosk and it would tie right into the FBI bank and then you would know right then and there if they were approved to come into the building or not. We also upgraded our ID system at the high school because the current system we have is outdated. It's becoming way too costly and we can't get parts or even a vendor to come service it. So we upgraded it. Now it ties directly into our student database um, so that everyone that works for the district can now get an ID at a fraction of the cost that we were spending. So 
as per the discussion that occurred last week, we started taking these precautions. Certainly, you can't guard against lunacy, but we're, we're taking every step that we can, and we'll be addressing these issues, and, and certainly any direction that you give us, as Ms. Howard said, we'll certainly try to do that to what we can. And if, we, if it's deploying other staff from there to the elementary schools, I'll send the plan out to you and let you know where the, ex the experts, being Ms. Howard and Mr. Young, will see a deficiency after talking to the principals on, on what they may lose in terms of coverage. And then you can make your decisions from there. Mrs. McAfee? I don't think we have time for that conversation. I was going to make a the suggestion. The is, is about getting the coverage into the elementary buildings. I think right. we're Right. I, I, I want to make a suggestion. Um, for the next three days, um, I would like to have uh, Mr. Shaw write up a resolution that um, we can vote on for the next three days to get um, security guards back that have been laid off, and then we can continue this discussion moving forward. <coughs> Yes, Mr. You talk about 21 mandates, right? Seven schools, three days. That, that should be the least. And it is a very, very temporary fix. It is a very temporary fix. Yes, Mr. Lawson. And I think a uh, couple of that is we need to dedicate ourselves to really resolving this issue. Um, Absolutely. Long term. So it's great that we can do this now, but I think that the parents if they were still here, would, would probably want to see us make sure that this is not just a, a short-term yeah, thing, yeah. that we actually have a plan moving forward. And I think well, guess we, what? We get to get more meetings in between now and when we come back on Christmas break and we can get it settled. Always still have some meatballs. Only if you bring the food, Ms. Prokash. <laughs> I realize that we're not allowed, you know, you said you're yes. not allowed to talk yes. to us, right. but this right. is our kids. Right, I understand. And you'll we'll have, we'll have an opportunity to make public comments again at the end of this okay. meeting. Okay. So you want to you want to read the resolution, David? It be resolved that the superintendent of schools is hereby authorized to take immediate steps to recall per diem security monitors to be deployed at each of the district's elementary schools to assure a daily security presence at those schools for the period beginning 12-19-12 and ending 12-21-12. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? On a question. Yes. Said the 21st. Now, if I'm in uh, order, I would like to amend that to say that we keep those individuals in place until we come up with a solution, permanent solution. Because to do it to, do it to the 21st, and if we come back to school on the second or third, and then we take them away, what was it for? I mean, to put our feet to the coals so that we need to address it quicker. But to me, it doesn't make sense to put them in there for three days. And then when we come back after session, they're gone. Okay. So let's say uh, January 14th. And then that forces us to meet and have a resolution by then. Mrs. McAfee. Okay, but question, yeah. why, why would we approve that tonight when we may in fact not need the security guards in the elementary schools beyond this right? I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you exactly, Phil. I, I'm just questioning, you know, we don't want, we have no money. We all know we have no money. Uh, so that we're, we're getting this out of the fund balance thing. Um, um, so we, we don't want to spend any more than, than we need to uh, while still being responsible. That, that's our goal. So is, 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 it, is there a way that we could write the resolution then that, that would stipulate that, that uh, uh, pending a permanent solution? 
situation, Ralph, could, could the, the security guards be continued uh, at the beginning of the year? I, 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 I'm not until the third right, not until um, actually the twenty second. It's the twenty. It's a because it's a long month, so it's the twenty second is workshop, and the 29th is the board meeting. But we'll we'll have been working on it in the interim. So, Mr. Levenstein. Well, I, I think the permanent solution. You know what the permanent solution is. Guards there, basically. The, the, the question is, is finding where the money is coming to do that. We don't have to think of anything. I mean, there are maybe other things we need to do, but if we want security people there, we, we know what the solution is. We don't know where the money is coming from. I, I'm not sure that we've reached that yeah. conclusion yet. Yeah, I, don't think we have. I, I think we have other things to look at and other options that have to be put on the table before we decide that that, in fact, is the solution. And, and that's why we need the time to have them in place, um, you know, as a, as a temporary piece until we have explored all options and possibilities for a long-term solution. All right, so back to the dates. Is there any way to word it, um, Mr. Shaw, to have them in place if needed until the 22nd, which is our workshop where we could take another action if there's another solution that is reached? discretion to the superintendent of schools and you can have him determine how to do the deployment, but you're still going to need a certain number. If you're recalling, you're going to need a certain number to meet that deployment scheme. Um, if, if you want the full daily presence at each of the buildings, then you're going to need seven until mm -hmm. the next board meeting. Right. And if you're going to be less than that, you're, you're going to have to define, in my opinion, a set number that he could move around. So they may be one building one day, or at the beginning one day, the end one day, a different building. Uh, that, that might be four people who are strategically deployed by the superintendent upon the advice of um, the security uh, director. Mrs. McAfee. Yeah, so up, up to seven security guards per day for a period of 21 days, or whatever. So you see, see where I'm going with that? I'm not saying yes, exactly. How many days it should be? No, I'm, I'm just, and, and then within that framework, Ralph would deploy as necessary. Right. So right. Up to right. Up to seven. That's correct. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right, if he puts up to, then if we come up with a permanent solution prior to that and it's different, then we have, the superintendent has a discretion to right. okay. move another recommendation. So I, I have wording that would be the amendment to the resolution. Be it resolved that the superintendent of schools is hereby authorized to take immediate steps to recall up to seven per diem security monitors each day to be deployed at the district's elementary schools to assure a significant daily security presence at these schools for the period beginning 12-19-12 and ending 1-22-13. Mm -hmm. Yes. So move. Can I have a motion? We move. I need a second. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Prokosh? Yes. Mr. Gresh? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Now I need a um, motion for that resolution as amended. So move. Second. 
questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Snackerby? Yes. Mr. Wilcox? Yes. Mr. Fred? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Lucek? Yes. Our next item on the agenda is from the superintendent. Thank you, Madam President. Resolution A is to approve facilities project change orders associated with approved projects. And the first one is NFA renovation, NFA auto body project, HOH renovation projects, South Middle School renovation, GAMS K-8 alteration, Temple Hill School athletic improvement project. I have a motion. So moved. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Chips? Yes. Resolution B is to approve facility use requests. Uh, number one is the New Bergen Large City School District, which is a uh, organization that belongs to us. And number two is the Kids Zone VITA fighter. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. Nagerby? Yes. Mr. Goldhawk? Yes. Mr. Red? Yes. Mr. Wilhall? Yes. Yes. That's all I have in this section, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Pisa. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Student Intervention and Support Services. Thank you, Madam President. The next item is the recommendations from the Committees on Special Education. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchel? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Noriega. The next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Executive Director of Curriculum and Instruction. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I would like to um, add two items to the agenda, item C and item D, that is um, in hand up. Can I have a motion to add item C and D to the agenda? Uh, Roll call, please. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Stokoff? Yes. Mr. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Yes. Item A is a resolution to authorize the superintendent of schools to execute an agreement to purchase grade level literacy material for K-5 to classrooms across the district. The funding source is Title I, Part A. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item B is a resolution to approve an overnight field trip to Houston, Texas for the NFA Solar Car Team. And the funding source is the Shell Echo Marathon Student and General Fund. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Item C is a resolution to authorize the board president to execute a contract with K-12 Insight. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Yes, Ms. Prokash. Uh, this is something that was it's not correct. Yes. Yes. Quite a bit to read. Uh, could you give me the general gist of it? K-12 <coughs> Insight. Uh, we as a district are obligated to uh, purchase surveys for the um, for the school improvement initiatives that uh, some members of the district are up in Albany um, being trained in right now. K-12 Insight uh, provides those surveys. Uh, the contract with them would uh, also include um, the ability of anyone in the district to uh, work with K-12 Insight to create a district 
uh, designed and administered um, survey as well. And they also provide services on data analysis um, of the survey results. Mr. Levenstein. These are surveys we have to. We have to. We have to. Mm -hmm. We have to, to uh, purchase them. Purchase there are only certain them. vendors that are um, that are on the list of allowable vendors. Well, we can use them for other things also. Yep. Other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Yes. And item D is a resolution to approve conference requests. We have a motion. <coughs> Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Brokaw? Yes. Mr. Brett? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Kuchek? Yes. yes. That concludes my items. Thank you, Dr. Shanahan. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent for Finance. Thank you, Madam President. First item is a resolution to authorize the Superintendent of Schools to execute an agreement with the Newburgh Capital Group to lease space at the Newburgh Mall for the Newburgh Free Library. We have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Rule call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Bogoff? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. And item B is a resolution to accept the monthly building reports. I have a motion. Second. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Bogoff? Yes. Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Mr. Kuchek? Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Vassello. Our next item on the agenda is from the Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. Thank you, Madam President. On the Human Resources agenda, items A through G, we have on the professional side, appointments, home teacher appointments, change of location, leave of absence, and on the civil service side, we have a rescission of a change of status, appointments, change of status, and former employees who passed away. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Reg? Yes. Yes. For resolution H, there's a revised resolution on the table. These are the additional professional change of status. I have a motion on revised resolution H. Questions or comments? to create a temporary special education teacher position and to approve an appointment to that position. The funding source is the fund balance. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution J is to abolish a foreign language, excuse me, foreign language teacher position and create an ESL teacher <coughs> position. There's no effect on the general fund. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokosh? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Yes. Resolution K is to approve the appointment of a point four teacher center coordinator. 
Resolution L on the table this evening. <clears throat> Resolution L is to approve a supplemental memorandum of agreement with the NTA and also creating um, additional scheduled J appointments. These are the, um, for the curriculum chair people. Can I have a motion on revised Resolution L? Questions or comments? Yes, Mrs. McAfee. So this is new money? New no. stipends? Uh, yes, the new stipends, but this money was budgeted during the budget process, so do we don't have to go from the balance for this? Okay, so we already knew that. We yes. There were no curricular chairs last year. Other questions or comments? Yes, Mrs. McAfee. What, what do we get to this? These are. Um, I know what they're getting, but what do we get? Okay. Um, <laughs> they're teachers that um, their work is done um, after school. They um, assist with the curriculum directors on supplies, inventories, helping them plan for professional development activities, participating in the professional development activities themselves. Um, it was to pick up some of. Um, maybe the gaps that were in place with the abolishment of the director positions. So is that, is that yeah. Uh, Yes, but in addition, uh, these individuals are the key people working on content curriculum, uh, especially as we revise our curriculum with the <coughs> Common Core Standards. We, we have fewer uh, directors, curriculum directors, right. and we needed content specialists right. to help pick up that work. So that would cover the writing of your Yep. Well, it covers the some of the writing and the organizing of the writing of the curriculum. And if I, if I want to know the kind of curriculum, you know, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I had an ulterior motive that I got to initially. <laughs> I know. Other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. 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 Resolution M is to approve and also to rescind um, a couple of the Schedule J appointments in 1213. The first three listed at the top are um, new approvals, uh, and the two other items listed next are rescinds for um, someone withdrew to be the cheerleading coach, and the one in the middle, that teacher has a different assignment at this point. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Ms. Gretch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Yes. Resolution N is to rescind a prior resolution where a national board teacher was um, appointed to become a, a candidate support instructor. This is a rescind of that. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? I understand, Mrs. Langer, they're moving forward with three as opposed to four. Is that correct? Yes. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution O is to approve a sabbatical leave of absence. Funding source of the phone balance. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. 
Yes. Resolution P is to appoint the Executive Director of Bilingual and ESL Services and Community Relations. Can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Resch? Yes. Mr. Woodhall? Yes. Ms. Buchek? Yes. Resolution Q is to appoint acting assistant principals at Newburgh Free Academy. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. <coughs> Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution R is to approve a tenure recommendation for a teacher. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinsky? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Bokov? Yes. Mr. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Mr. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution S is for your information only. It's upcoming tenure recommendations for an administrator and a teacher. And at this point, Madam President, I ask to add Resolution T to the agenda. I have a motion to add Resolution T to the agenda. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levenstein? Yes. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. Resolution T is a resolution that grants Melissa Siegel and Matt Dotto a leave of absence from their position as vice principal and further makes an appointment of Melissa Siegel and Matt Dotto to the position of acting co-principal at Newburgh Free Academy, effective December 12th, 2012, and terminating on or before June 30th, 2013. I have a motion. Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard. Yes. Mr. Lawson. Yes. Mr. Levenstein. Yes. Ms. McAfee. Yes. Ms. Brokaw. Yes. Ms. Resch. Yes. Mr. Woodall. Yes. Ms. Kuchek. Yes. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mrs. Lang. Our next item on the agenda is from the clerk of the board. Thank you, Madam President. I have two items. First is resolution A. Resolution authorizing the superintendent's board to execute agreement for foreign ulcer bulletins to digitalize payroll documents. Can I have a motion? Second. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ms. McAfee? Yes. Ms. Brokaw? Yes. Ms. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Ms. Kuchek? Yes. I didn't need the approval of the minutes of the special meeting of November 19th, the regular meeting of November 27th, and the special meeting of December 27th. Can I have a motion? Questions or comments? Roll call. Oh, sorry. Ms. Resch. Corrections are noted. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Levinson? Yes. Mr. McAfee? Yes. Mr. Bokov? Yes. Mr. Red? Yes. Mr. Woodall? Yes. Yes. That's all I have in the back, President. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Our next item on the agenda is public comment on non agenda items. Um, I have three names here, two I believe already left, but I'll call them to be sure, and then after that, um, we can take others that, that can sign up. Um, is Lisa Novella still here? 
for Diane Troller. Mr. Art Plickton. Good evening. I'm Art Plickton, president of the Newburgh Teachers Association. Uh, Newburgh recently got a major grant to help one of our schools, Temple Hill. And that's wonderful. It is a school that has many students who come from poor families, many students who are English language learners. Uh, it is our district's priority school. Many students are struggling academically because they haven't had the same advantages as other students in our district. My understanding is that much of the grant will be uh, providing coaching and professional development to teachers. This suggests that a change in the delivery of instruction will make the difference. The teachers are already working very hard and doing an excellent job. Training and coaching are wonderful, but the students need more. They need smaller class sizes and more individualized help. There are 28 to 30 students in kindergarten classes. And many of these students are coming in with deficits from home because they didn't have the advantage of having uh, pre-K programs or daycare that was providing adequate instruction. That is too many kids. We need to provide the help at the younger grades so the students have a greater chance of academic success for the entire school career. And I've heard that voiced here at board meetings. We need smaller class sizes <coughs> and teaching assistants in the younger grades. Give these students the start they need, they deserve. I would just like to wish the board, central office, and all present a wonderful holiday and a safe and healthy new year from the NTA Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Is there anyone else that would like to comment on non-agenda items? totally with art. Those children need smaller classes in order to function. But that's not why I'm here. Um, <clears throat> what are we going to have? Many of, you must, many of you must think that black folks are ignorant. But the African Americans that you are now dealing with and will be de dealing with <coughs> Are of a different breed. You should fear them because they are intelligent and educational leaders and bold in the defense of their children and definitely not a part of the good old boy system. But now the good old boy system has changed. It is now the good old boy system and girl system. But also, the good old boy system is not just white folks, it's also black folks. You're getting only a taste of it now. So let's see what we have here. Educated, old African Americans, versus those making a last, a last ditch effort to hang on to a failing system. And it doesn't stop there. It's an entrenchment here, and it's going to take forces outside of Newburgh to break it, or else no matter what you, you do, you can get all the grants you 
uh, that you want. But have our kids improved? Some have, most have, okay? When we look to Middletown as a success story, there is definitely something wrong in Newburgh. I said all this to lead up to the assistant superintendent's position that you approved last week following the executive session meeting workshop. I was there, and you ran through that item like lightning. It was like sneaking it through as you do, as you did the contracts, extensions, and raises of central administration. Now, you want to find some money to get security guards? Use that money, okay? Then, again, but that is what you do. You have these executive meetings and then you come out and you approve things. Oh, it's legal. When you go back out for a principal, I expect you to use the same job description. By the way, I was at a party the, uh, the other night, and Randolph Thompson, no, Randolph Johnson, from the Poughkeepsie Board of Education, walked up to me, and he said, Grace, what is happening in Newburgh? A senator has said to him, oh, we got the story of what happened in that um, super, assistant superintendent's position. Plus, Elaine Magwood had it all along because, again, she gets calls from down in Rockland and Westchester County. As a member of the NAACP, many of the district directors only have to put in a call to one person and the information begins to flow. And last week, it flowed. I went to, oh, I said that one. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, I hope that you have informed your attorney, your, your attorney as to the legal shenanigans that went on after Mr. Pisa had already offered Dr. Linda Suarez the assistant superintendent's position. Do you really understand the gravity of what transpired? One of the reasons this was allowed to happen was because you've always done things your way. You have meetings outside of regular meetings, and then you, then you bring meetings back to the rest of the group, and, and you just do what you want to do. When you hired Mr. Pizzo, you knew that by today's standards, he was, wasn't qualified. You paid Ms. money. Uh, Mrs. Bowles, we're, okay. we're not supposed to Mrs. do Mrs. Bowles. Yes. You have uh, done that for the last six months. I will not be vilified by you again. Do you understand that? I, 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 I'm fully, I, I, I I'm fully certified to be superintendent of the world. I apologize. Thank you. I apologize. Okay, you paid for a superintendent search. And, and Mrs. Bowles, your time is up. I'm and sorry. you called it off. Thank you. I'd be happy to have um, you turn in any written comments that you didn't get to finish to the board clerk. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to speak on non-agenda items? Seeing none, be it resolved that the board hereby recesses into executive session for the following purpose to discuss the employment history of particular individuals. The board will not be taking action after the executive session. Can I have a motion? Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Howard, yes. Mr. Lawson, yes. 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 Yes.